This is a short explanation on utilizing the core to deliver the club into the impact zone, to accelerate the club most efficiently and effectively into the impact zone. The first thing to understand is that the core has two meaningful contractions in the golf swing. The first is on upon change of direction between the backswing to the downswing. So as the golfer initiates the downswing from backswing to downswing, the core is quickly stretched, it responds by contracting, and essentially begins the process of the kinetic link. That happens at the very, very, very beginning of the downswing. So it's right here, bam, that core, boom, the core is contracted, and it accelerates or begins the process of uh, the kinetic link. The second meaningful contraction of the core is just prior to impact as a part of bracing to release the club into the impact zone. That's the contraction that I want to talk about today with respect to releasing the club, gaining distal end speed or club head speed efficiently and effectively into the impact zone. So, in discussing this, the first thing to understand is that the body creates distal end speed most effectively when it flings or releases the club into the impact zone rather than using a large lever arm uh, uh, accelerating into the impact zone with, without a club release. So in other words, when we move the club as one unit with the arms, we're essentially rotating about the spine, so our axis of rotation is essentially the spine, and we have a very long lever arm. So we have a large moment to overcome as we rotate. So it's much more difficult from a musculoskeletal perspective to create a lot of distal end speed by rotating a long lever arm or a large lever arm. It's much more effective for the body to accelerate with the club bent or cocked. So now we have that lever arm shortened. We work from the core, from, from the spine, to the wrist. And so the lever arm itself is shortened because we've tucked the club back. And now the club's back is, is uh, tucked back, our lever arm shorter, the amount of, of, um, uh, of moment to, to overcome to accelerate is greatly reduced. The mass of the system, however, stays the same in that we have the club and the arms both rotating around the spine. So what the body then does is accelerates the, the system, the arms and the club, to a maximal point just before impact, then slows down the arms and releases the club. The way it does that, and the, way that's, the reason that's efficient, is that we have the lever arm from our spine to our wrist initially. So we have that shorter lever arm and as we decelerate the arms and release the club, as we release the club out away, we now move the axis of gyration or rotation from the spine to the wrist. So when we're rotating here, we're rotating about the spine to the wrist and as we release the club, we shift that axis of rotation out to the wrist. So now we're releasing around the hinge of the wrist. So we've again minimized that lever arm and uh, um, as a result increased the efficiency of accelerating the distal end, which is the club head, into the impact zone. So what you'll see a lot of in the golf swing, especially with higher handicap amateurs, is a breakdown in sequencing that forces the club to release early. When that does, they essentially uh, increase the lever arm and then work with the arms to the impact zone. So the club gets accelerated out early or cast and then they work with their arms to the impact zone to try to maintain some linear speed. However, this is inefficient. It's number one going to rob them of the ability to create speed. Number two, it's inefficient uh, from a musculoskeletal perspective and as a result you're also going to impact ball striking. The consistency of, of ball strike as well as the angle of attack, the club face orientation can all be affected by working the club into the impact zone uh, once it's been released. Uh, in slightly more effective swings, uh, more elite level swings that still have breakdown and sequencing, the release of the club isn't quite as obvious as it might be in a higher handicap, but it's still there. The angle may still look intact, but the speed has been lost. The club shaft is essentially uh, releasing, the shaft itself can even be seen bending, and it's from here that the golfer then uses body or arm to get into the impact zone and try to maintain some linear speed. Neither of those is biomechanically 
that effective. You're going to be you're going to lose efficiency. You're going to lose ability to create speed, but you're also going to impact the consistency and accuracy of the movement, releasing the club into the impact zone. So again, the most effective way to release the club or accelerate the club into the impact zone is by accelerating it with a, a cocked wrist or some angle here to minimize the lever arm, then decelerate rapidly and allow the club to fling or release away from the body, in particular the arms moving the axis of rotation from the spine to the wrist. The way we do this is by dramatically bracing or contracting all the musculature to some degree, but it certainly focuses on or kind of emanates from the core contracting strongly to release the club. So what we do is we accelerate, and as the club, once the club starts accelerating, we brace through the core to release the club. Now, in a fluid dynamic swing where we're not impacting a bag or stopping to show the process, it looks like we've swung right through. So it looks like a nice fluid movement through the impact zone. If we break it down using 3D motion analysis at high speeds, we can see that right through the impact zone, even though visually to the eye it looks like a nice fluid pattern, nice fluid all the way kind of non-stopping pattern all the way through, the body is bracing very dramatically to allow the club to release away. Now in some cases you have some guys who have a really dramatic angle and they really release that club shaft. In other cases you have guys who don't have quite the angle but it's not the amount of angle as much as it is the speed with which that angle is being released into the impact zone that matters. So the ability to brace through the core, a solidly uh, uh, connect to the ground and brace through the core to release the club is biomechanically most effective for releasing the club into the impact zone and creating distal end speed as well as a more natural release path that allows the club to be squared more efficiently, more consistently.